Hello everyone, uh, Tucker, Pharmacist at MD Custom, uh, back uh, this time to talk again about ADHD. So one of the one of the questions I got was about uh, magnesium levels and stimulant use and whether it's something that we recommend supplementing magnesium if someone's on stimulants because stimulants can increase um, body demands of magnesium. That is certainly true, but then I kind of went down a rabbit hole as I tend to do looking at studies that are out there and found a, a really big robust study that kind of looked at uh, predispositions, specifically in children again, for dietary supplement uh, deficiencies that could be associated with ADHD. So we're going to look at a few of them specifically today. We're looking at vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, and iron. And we're st stating that we've found that there's a correlation between having low levels of these and a predisposition towards ADHD in children. But the evidence isn't there with what we have right now to establish that that is a cause of it, but certainly gives us another avenue of a way to help reduce some of these symptoms. And then, so we're going to dig into that study a little bit. Uh, we'll include a link. Uh, I'm, we'll pop a picture of it right now. You can Google that. Otherwise, uh, we'll have a link in the in the notes below um, if you want to pull that up. It's kind of a big one though, so make sure you get your reading glasses. So first one we're going to talk about is zinc. So it's not entirely known how zinc can be involved in ADHD, but there are some theories. Um, we do know it's, uh, zinc is involved in a pathway for more than 300 enzymes. It's a cofactor, making sure those enzymes are working effectively. And it's involved in the body's production of prostaglandins and neurotransmitters, which neurotransmitters are at the, the core of ADHD. A lot of those treatments are working on dopamine, especially uh, increasing that neurotransmission level. So would stand to reason that if um, our enzymes involved in that are not working, that we're going to have less of that neurotransmitter activity. And if we know zinc is involved in that and it's low, that's a source of an area that we can really use to address uh, some of these symptoms. Zinc is also, so one of those cofactors it's involved in is B6, uh, one of the B vitamins. Um, it's necessary for B6 to be activated. So we can get it from diet, but if it's not in its active form, our body can't use it effectively. So zinc is one of those cofactors that activates the B6. Um, and that B6 is going to be really involved in converting tryptophan into serotonin, which is one of the neurotransmitters. So kind of a direct involvement with neurotransmitter production right there. Another neurohormone that zinc is highly involved in is melatonin. It assists in both the production and the regulation. So making sure that our melatonin levels are rising throughout the day, controlling that diurnal cycle. Melatonin is involved as a modulator of dopamine, which is another neurotransmitter active in the brain. It's what stimulants work on directly. So we are low on zinc, we're going to, our basically our serotonin production is going to suffer, our melatonin production is going to suffer, which in turn is going to affect our dopamine production. So a little bit of a uh, domino effect there. Another area that zinc could be involved in dopamine activity as well is it is the dopamine uh, transporter receptor does have binding sites for zinc. So uh, zinc is involved in making sure that dopamine transporter from one neuron to the next is functioning correctly. So I won't go into the minute, minute details of how much more depleted were these patients, where did they do these studies, um, open up the links in that show notes, and um, if that generates any questions, feel free to comment below, and I, I'll, I'll certainly circle back in the near future and uh, address any of that. So when they looked at this study, one of the things they looked at was lower serum zinc levels, so looking uh, sub subject of the study to subject of the study, if they had lower zinc levels, what was that correlation between parent and teacher ratings of inattention, which is kind of how a lot of ADHD is measured. It's less objective data, more subjective, uh, looking at restlessness, um, inability to pay attention, and parents and teachers are probably going to be the most tied into looking at where those <laughs> where those levels lie on a daily basis. So that's generally where a lot of their efficacy 
data is coming from, which is very typical for a lot of um, ADHD types of studies. So they did find that there was a lower, lower zinc levels would be associated with more inattention. One of the thoughts as far as what's driving these lower levels of zinc, is there anything that is specific for this patient could be changed? So um, zinc, as many of us know, it's uh, involved in immune response, uh, response to inflammation, response to stress. So all of those are going to basically cause our body to utilize more zinc, which can in turn lead to a deficiency. Another area where we can look at basically all the, all the supplements and vitamins that we're looking at um, could be decreased in patients is uh, caloric intake. Stimulants we know have an appetite suppressant effect, so a lot of these patients are going to be consuming fewer calories per day, but then also a lot of those calories are going to come from very calorie-dense foods, I will call them. So uh, things that aren't going to be very high in a lot of our trace uh, minerals, a lot of our vitamins that we're needing. Um, usually it's more like the McDonald's style uh, cheeseburgers and fries. So that could be another driver of where some of these nutritional deficiencies lie. And th this study did look at a lot of efficacy data. I won't dig into that specifically. There is another study I'll highlight after this that actually did look at supplementing placebo controlled. So we'll, we'll pull a lot of data from there, but feel free to open up that study and look for yourself. The next mineral that we're going to look at is magnesium. Uh, magnesium plays a role in muscle relaxation, protein synthesis, energy production. One thing that's interesting about magnesium it is the intracellular stores can be a little bit difficult to measure because most of our magnesium is actually contained within our bones, but magnesium is also involved in regulating heart rhythm. So if we're doing just a simple blood test, it can oftentimes be difficult to see how much magnesium do we actually have stored in our body. There was actually a very large study that looked at magnesium levels and its correlation with uh, symptoms of inattention and behavioral issues. Uh, actually looked at 810 children. Thank you again. Uh, was pleased to see all the interest in this topic and uh, look forward to getting more questions. And if we, we gotta dig deeper, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep learning and dig with you. <laughs>